This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 3-22-23, show 477, and it's Fed Day, Nick. It is Fed Day, Kerry. This is a big one, too. Uh, this afternoon at 2 p.m., the Federal Open Market Committee will conclude a two-day meeting. They're going to make their announcement with their interest rate policy decision for the U.S., now, everybody's expecting a 25 basis point rate hike in the Fed funds rate. So that's kind of already factored in, baked into the cake, so to speak. But the verbiage, what they say, is going to be very, very important. And that's going to be the market mover, in my opinion. Well, with all that's going on with the banks, you got to believe that the interest rate hikes, this is probably going to be the last one for a while. I would think that's a fair possibility. However... Uh, we all know that inflation is not going away. It doesn't just arrive, come in, and just leave. Um, if they actually signal like they're going to do nothing going forward, they're going to pause, yeah, that's going to probably give the market a little bit of a, of a bump to the upside, maybe cause a rally. But inflation is here for the remainder until certain conditions change. I don't really see them really defeating inflation. So, you know, they're going to have to pick their poison here of what they're going to want to do. Are they going to try to rescue banks um, or are they going to try to fight inflation? Remember, the inverted yield curve is the real problem here. And there's still an inverted yield curve between the two year and the 10 year. So, um, you know, I, I think they're really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, they're going to have to make a choice of what they want to try to help out. But um, they're really, really caught here. I, I, I just don't think there's an easy, easy escape. Yeah, well, I have the cure to inflation. Uh, we go back to 1974 when Jerry Ford was president and he had this button that said win, which stood for whip inflation now. And it was an attempt to spur a grassroots movement to combat inflation in the U.S. by encouraging personal savings and disciplined spending habits. I mean, you know, like <laughs> that's about the only thing that's going to work now. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll start walking around with wind buttons on our uh, on our coats, but uh, I'm not really so sure. You know, these guys can really take care of an inflation. You have too many problems going on. If if you get another war, like say China invades uh, Taiwan, inflation is going to just go through the roof. I mean, it's just they are really stuck. They're just you know for the first time. In a long time, I think the Fed's really, really caught here. All right. Well, I'm buying us a couple of uh, win buttons, Nick, so we can personally start this movement to whip inflation now, okay? Because the, the, <laughs> the Fed just isn't going to be able to do it. I'll be the first to put it on. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. They're, they're 328 at this place called Zazzle. So, uh, hey, if you want a win button, you know, and you uh, sign up for our mailing list, we will give you a win button, uh, KL at carryletts.com. Compliments of Nick and myself. Hey, so <laughs> so what, what are the, what's the market doing ahead of uh, Fed Day here, ahead of the announcement? Yeah, the market market's really not doing much. You could tell this is probably one of the more anticipated Fed announcements because we really have nothing going on out here today. Um, everybody is just sitting and waiting. It's very, very quiet. And it's understandable since this is, really probably one of the more important meetings that we're going to hear. I mean, just last week, we had uh, two weeks ago, we've had three bank failures in the U.S. You had Credit Suisse basically fail and have to get taken over by um, UBS, uh, really taken under, I should say. So, you know, um, this is this is probably going to be one of the more important meetings. And everybody's waiting to see, are they going to, you know, actually raise rates, um, which will, you know, probably um, slow down inflation a little bit. Or are they going to, you know, go out there and say, hey, we're going to pause? You know, so there's still an unknown out there what they're going to do. And um, the markets are just waiting on this. They're just really not doing much right now. All right. Well, 
uh, hey, precious metals, uh, gold took a little bit of a hit. It looks like it looked like it was going up to 2000 and now it's retraced. Yeah, gold has come back in today. It's it's holding steady today, though. You just got a little bit of a flat day. But the last two sessions, you know, gold has come in quite a bit, you know, got back. It's trading back below 1950. Um, and, you know, it did briefly, you know, get to 2000. So, um, again, uh, you know, gold to me is a new VIX. It's the new volatility index. So I, I think everybody's going to be watching for it to, to see what the Fed has to say. Remember their comments are most likely going to move gold, going to move interest rates, and obviously move the dollar. So everything is in play today. Um, but gold is just taking a little bit of a breather here to see what the Fed says. Now, if the Fed comes out and they're hawkish, you know, I probably think, you know, gold could uh, <clears throat> gold could pull in a little bit more. I think it's overbought. It's very extended. But it's the ultimate fear gauge. And if you get fear out here again, gold could move to the upside. So traders got to watch gold not only – you know, is it a play on on what the Fed does? But it's also a play in fear. And right now, the the central banks seem to have calmed fear down regarding the banking crisis. But um, you know, this banking crisis is systemic because it's a yield curve problem. It's and every bank is facing it. Yeah, uh, it's just the uh, the big banks are a little bit insulated from it, and plus they got a flood of deposits coming from all the small banks. So further consolidation in the banking industry is inevitable. All right, we got a few questions to address here. Number one, Nat Gas, uh, it went up a bit. Now it's pulling back. What's your take? Yeah, ironically, I bought Nat Gas yesterday, so um, I'm in it to win it. And um, right now, I'm up a little bit on the trade. But you know, we had a nice um, Nat Gas play already, Kerry. If you go back and you remember when I picked up Nat Gas right on the 21st of February. I mean, Nat Gas ran up 37% in about uh, nine days. So now Nat Gas is pulled back in, and it looks like a good level here. So I bought Nat Gas. I'm in it, and um, hopefully we'll see Nat Gas move back up, you know, very, very soon. I think um, the upside target for Nat Gas would probably be in the low threes and then ultimately four. Um, those are your next big resistance levels that I see. Especially uh, if the inflation trade is back with us here, right? If, uh, if we're getting inflation, then you're going to see it in the energy prices pretty quickly, right? Oh, I think so. Um, and, you know, more so I think you'll see it in gold. But, um, you know, in particular, everything's going to inflate. Right now, I think that gas has been, you know, so beaten up. And remember, it traded up around the $10 level if you go back to uh, August of 2022. And then we just went as low as $2 recently or Pierce $2 level. Um, just last month. So now, I mean, I, I love that gas at these levels. I think that gas has bottomed. I don't see it going any lower. Um, and I, I love the play here. So, you know, if you want to try that gas, put a stop below the low, <clears throat> excuse me, you could use a weekly chart close or even a monthly chart close. But um, this is a this is a spot if you want to get in it. Okay. Dallas asked for that update. Now, twist twister. Uh, what's Nick's take on platinum? Okay, so platinum right now um, has been, you know, one of the big movers uh, if you go back to the early part of the year. And then it, you know, really retraced quite a bit. Now, I like platinum, but I'd like to get it a little bit lower. I'm a little bit of a stickler for plot per price, but I think if you could get that um, probably below 900, somewhere around 850, I, I love platinum long term. Okay, me too. It's been beaten down for so many years now. And it's not taking any uh, account of the uh, the war in uh, Ukraine disruption there and uh, the political turmoil in South Africa, which is why you can't trade the news. You have to trade the charts. So. That's right. And again, if you get you get platinum down at eight fifty, um, jump all over it and hold it. Don't even sell it. That that's probably going to be what I call a golden goose uh, trade level. Or a platinum goose, right? <laughs> uh, you, you could call it a platinum goose. That's even better. <laughs> All right. Uh, and let's see here. We have a question about gold from Drama Queen 1776. Um, I can imagine uh, what her husband's like. But, uh, hey, is Nick 
still calling for fifteen hundred dollar gold. <laughs> I am. I am. Nothing has changed. You know, I don't change that easy carry. Right now, we've had a good pop in gold, but this is on fear. So if fear alleviates at some point, gold comes back in. It'll get to that fifteen hundred handle. That is going to be the second coming of gold. That's where I would be loading up the boat. You know, I just did a similar trade in silver not that long ago. A lot of people were laughing at me. But um, if you recall, Kerry, back in um, September, I had told uh, all of my members, I said, hey, this is the day. We got into gold on the low of the session at the low. And uh, we ran that thing all the way up to the low 20s from 17 under 1750. So, you know, I think um, the silver trade is not over either. That is one that is um, just taking a breather now, and it will go a lot higher, but gold still will make that one more final descent, in my opinion. And when you get to that 1500 handle, hopefully, you know, you, you have the, the courage to step in because that's when most people will say, well, I'm a little bit scared now. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not going to do it, but that's when you have to do it. And uh, everybody likes things up at highs. I'm not one of those people. I like them at lows. And I think you're going to get your shot at that 1500 handle. All right. J Baby asked this question. Once the Fed pivots, ask Nick if he thinks it will be sell the news event, buy the rumor, meaning stocks go down meaningful, meaningfully. Thank you. Well, it's a little hard to say um, right now because what I would think is that if you get the Fed to pivot and if that were to happen, I think you would get a big rally. So at some point, though, um, you know, the market will will teeter off. I just don't know. I'd have to see the action first, um, the price movement, then I'd have to go to my calculator and start figuring it out. But um, it's a good question. I, I just don't have a great answer for it because I don't know exactly what the reaction is going to be. And not that I even care about the Fed announcement so much. I just have to see the momentum in the market and that will give me a good heads up of where it can go. All right. And final question from Jim J. Um, gold this morning, and this was like two days ago, right now in China is 2026 per uh, ounce, dollars per ounce, silver 2324. There is a huge spread in spot prices. Uh, you got any thoughts on that? Well, every every place is different, you know, a little bit different. Um, generally, it's always priced in dollars. That's what we always look at. That's predominantly what I look at. I don't really look at it, you know, in other currencies. Um, but, you know, you, you're going to pay more in certain places. And in, in other places, you may pay less. But, um, you know, Right now, when I just look at the gold price, regardless of where you are, I price everything in dollars. And, um, you know, again, gold has had a tremendous run on the back of this uh, banking crisis. Remember, it was trading around 1813, 1820, and then, you know, spiked all the way up to 2000, now sitting in there around 1950. So, you know, that's all fear. Um, that's not sustainable. Because eventually fear leaves the market and then gold will come back in. So just make sure if you're going to trade it, no matter where you are, um, you wait for a good pattern set up, a good chart set up, um, where the support is really, really evident. And that's where the big crowd institutional money is going to come in. And, um, you know, right now, uh, this is just a lot of uh, the movement we've had lately is just a lot of whipsaw and, and upside because of fear. And that's usually not sustainable. All right. And finally, Renee says a golden interview. That was from our uh, second coming of gold interview a couple of days ago. That is it for today. Make sure you go over to Nick's site in the money stocks.com. See always beating the averages for decades. Twitter feeds at ITMS at Nick Santiago 01 at Kerry Lutz. Emails welcome KL at Kerry Lutz.com. And, of course, keep putting your comments on the YouTube channel. We get to them eventually. And, Nick, uh, well, it'll be interesting to see what kind of Fed doublespeak we get. And uh, <laughs> we will discuss it more on Friday. We'll talk to you then. Sounds good.